I speak it's a hill climb race. I think the most crazy race you can have in the world. I would describe, uh, first of all, like dangerous, really dangerous. What could possibly go wrong? Famous last words and up this mountain about everything. Picture going up a mountain where six or seven blind corners exact same direction look the same and some you can take at 130, 150 miles an hour and some are hairpins with a thousand foot cliff on the outside. It's a challenge, you know, personal, technological, historical. You basically want to go beat the mountain and, and of course go as fast as you possibly can. The mountain attracts the best drivers to prove their mettle. 2018 is no different. Amongst those in Colorado with a point to prove are Roman Dumas, a Frenchman with victories under his belt here and in endurance races like Le Mans. He's spearheading a multi-million dollar and probably the most cutting edge technical assault on the mountain using an electric Volkswagen IDR Pikes Peak. We've been allowed into the team to see their attempt to create motorsport history. Travis Pastrana, a motorsport hero for the millennial generation. Motocross, rally, and his own Nitro Circus have made him a legend in his own race helmet. He's back to the mountain for a third time. Reese Millen, current holder of the electric record up the hill and a regular at Pikes Peak, armed with a potent Bentley for an attack on the SUV record. And Pikes Peak veteran Paul Dallenbach. A quarter of a century racing here under his belt, driving an analog open wheeler with lots of grunt and little finesse. For almost a century, man and machine have tried to tame the mountain that is Pike's Peak. In or on almost anything with a motor and a set of wheels, daredevils have risked everything to try and be fastest up the road that summits the Rocky Mountain at around 14,000 feet or 4,300 meters above sea level. That road is 12 miles long, or nearly 20 kilometers, and has 156 bends, some of which drop vertically to half a mile to the valley below. Until fairly recently, the surface was gravel, slippery, unpredictable, and potentially deadly. The history of the race has been kind of big money, manufacturer-backed teams versus local small guy. And often the small guys could compete just partly because they knew the road so well. When the first race occurred, not many people even owned cars, right? And in fact, my grandfather went to the first race on horseback. He rode his horse up to the race. The drivers in those early days could have their mechanic ride with them. They could stop and work on their car and then continue. Spencer Penrose was building the Broadmoor Hotel and he needed a place for people to recreate when they were here and something, also something to draw them here. He actually tried to buy the Cog Railway, which already existed, but the owner of the railway wouldn't sell it to him. So there was a carriage road up Pikes Peak at the time, so he turned it into an automobile road, kind of as something for Broadmoor patrons to enjoy. And then of course he started the Pikes Peak Hill Climb to advertise his road. For most of its history, the annual Pikes Peak International Hill Climb was largely an all-American affair. Detroit iron and muscular motors trying to fight the thin air and steep gradients. Then in the 1980s, following in the footsteps of their forebears, who trundled across Colorado in covered wagons, Europeans took on this mountain in the Wild West. The Euro invasion was in fire-spitting, 600-horsepower, turbocharged rally cars designed for places like Alpine roads above Monte Carlo and logging roads in Finland. Piloted by names like Vattenen, Mouton and Roll, gods of rallying, they came with Volkswagens and Audis and Peugeots, which were so fast they were outlawed in world rallying, but thrived on what they call America's Mountain. This race was always really famous in Europe when I was a kid, you know, I was fascinated by this race and this film about what I saw, about these big drivers all the time. And uh, I said, oh, one day I would like to do that. 
when Group B Rally stopped allowing it in WRC, all the Europeans came over to race their amazing Group B rally cars up this mountain. It gave them a place to do it. It gives every motorhead a chance to build the biggest monster, the biggest beast that they can possibly imagine and see how fast they can run it. On one of the most challenging courses, it can't get any better. So as a driver, and there's a lot of great European drivers, there's a lot of great drivers all over the world, this is a place that you want to test your merit. From that moment, Pikes Peak became famous around the world and has drawn drivers from rallying Le Mans and IndyCar. It's a rite of passage for many stars. With its fame came changes. Since 2012, the gravel has been totally replaced by asphalt, but the challenges of the environment have not been tamed. Pikes Peak is such an incredible challenge. Not only will weather play a big factor on race day, but without that in mind, it's the challenge of the environment. I don't believe there's any other race course in the world that the start line is at 10,000 feet. And on top of that, you're gonna to climb to 14,115 feet. The altitude is very dangerous. So uh, yeah, you have to adapt your car for this kind of race which is unique in the world. I think the coolest thing about this event is that you have electric cars going up against 1,200 horsepower V8 beasts. You've got a dirt track, late models. Everybody has a chance. You could have on the podium a rally car, an Indy car, and a NASCAR. Yeah. And that doesn't happen anywhere. Volkswagen here, they've got an amazing vehicle, they've got an amazing driver, and it's an incredible combination. Will they beat the record on the day? Uh, I, I feel that they have the technology and the speed. I think you may see the eight minute barrier get beaten. You have so many cars that are just down to the basics, garage built beasts. This car was originally a Wells Coyote that was made for the dirt when it was all dirt. And as they changed the course, we decided to change the car instead of building a new car. So we started putting IndyCar bits on it, IndyCar rear end and transaxle, and we built the wings and put more downforce and tunnels underneath it. We're mechanical fuel injections. There's no computers on the car. It's about 900 horsepower at sea level, and it's a beast. This is uh, Bentley's flagship, the Bentayga, powered by a six liter twin turbo W12 cylinder. Our main focus is to prove how fast this SUV is and break the SUV record that stands right now at 12 minutes and 35 seconds. In the Porsche GT4 Cayman Club Sport class, it's the perfect starting area to do it as safely as you can do Pikes Peak. It's still dangerous, it's still fast. Definitely my main goal is, is not to go off, but having said that, it's definitely more fun to win than it is to lose. This car I'm driving this year from Volkswagen Motorsport is just like a rocket. It's a little bit more one tone, full electric, so it means as soon as you apply the throttle, you have all the power. You don't lose any power with the altitude. You have a four-wheel drive car, so with a lot of downforce, as you can see, a lot of big rear wing. It's a kind of, uh, we can say, a Formula One for Pikes Peak easily. I think it's one of the biggest opportunities we ever had. Of course, we would have liked to have a little bit more time because six months and a half to build a car, to develop it, to build it, and then to start testing with it is, of course, very, very short. But uh, I can only say, of course, it's a play field for engineering. It's a fantastic opportunity to showcase whatever you can do with your team. You get to see everyone's different interpretation of what's going to be the best, most highest horsepower, aerodynamic marvel they can possibly make and then you have some multi, multi-million dollar teams. Frenchman Romain Dumas has won Le Mans, held the world endurance title, and has been victorious on Pikes Peak. For 2018, Dumas is back in Colorado and teamed with another European returnee, Volkswagen. Volkswagen's attempt on Pikes Peak in the late 1980s was thwarted. The revolutionary twin-engine Golf, driven by Jockey Kleit, was pre-event favorite, but failed to finish. It was very, very close. On the end was really, really just, just a second. The pity thing, we, we didn't finish. Two corners in front of the jacket flag was finished and the, the wheel was off on the right side. A bearing came loose and then the car stops. For me, it was okay. 
the 85, 86, 87 when I did Pikes Peak and I'm really proud. Three decades on, Pikes Peak is unfinished business for the world's biggest car company. But for 2018, they've not come with a fire-breathing version of the Golf. To reach the summit in record time, Volkswagen have started from the ground up and gone electric. We want to break the electric record and bring it to Volkswagen. We were here 30 years ago and uh, it didn't go so very well. We just stopped it before the top with a winning car. And so, of course, that's like a little black note in our Volkswagen Motorsport history. Whilst the Volkswagen is not the first electric car to be entered for Pikes Peak, it is the most technologically advanced. To design the, the Pikes Peak car is, is for sure very complicated because you only can test uh, the, the week before the race. Uh, we did a lot of simulation. We really push a lot to try to make the lightest uh, electric car as possible. That was our main goal. I mean, one of the benefits of this electric car in Pikes Peak is that for sure, with the altitude, we will not lose any power. That's uh, the main thing. Volkswagen ran their car for the first time in Colorado a few weeks before the event. My hope in Sunday for sure is to get the electric record. We are here for that. I want to have a perfect run without any issue to go to the top and to get the record. Like Indianapolis or Daytona, Pikes Peak is up there as one of the great amphitheaters of American motorsport. The difference is you don't have to get up before dawn or climb a two-mile high mountain to see the action at Indy. The mountain seems to dictate what it's going to happen that day. The weather comes in in the afternoon, usually about 11 o'clock. We start getting thunderstorms. It could be 70 degrees down here and snowing up top. The first time I drove this race, 2012, actually I was leading the race uh, nearly to the top and suddenly it started to rain and after snow. But you cannot do anything. You are a passenger of the story. You just try to get to the top because you know that you want to finish first. It's risky, so you don't want to do any mistake, but you cannot control it. That's uh, one of the problems of this race. The mountain will decide and you cannot decide anything. Everyone's basically there to race the mountain. This is one of the few events that when you cross the finish line, the first thing you're thinking is not, how did I do or what was my time? You're just like, I'm alive. Before in the past, it was gravel, now it's tarmac, and so on and so on. I say, yeah, but now in tarmac, it's even more dangerous because the speed is a lot higher. So if you miss something, you will be even more down, you know? It's tricky, and, and now, you know, when it was dirt, it really didn't matter that much because, you know, the dirt tires were fine in either one, but now that we're running slicks, you can really get yourself into some trouble. And, you know, rain tires, we don't really test that much up here in the rain, so we don't really know it works. Um, I'm using some dirt tires that we developed from Hoosier for our rain tires, and uh, hopefully we don't have to use them up here. It's a tricky deal, and you, you never know from day to day. It could start out with blue skies, and you're like, okay, it's going to be great. And then uh, 12 o'clock, it's a hailstorm, and uh, we have to shut the race down. Well, the dangers are high. I had a huge crash in 2012 when my throttle stuck uh, just after, after the start, and I took down nine trees, cut in half five trees, knocked down another four, got airlifted out of here, and uh, I was just extremely lucky. Uh, all the safety gear worked, and, and came back the next year and won the class and set a record. So. Um, whether I didn't learn anything or <laughs> if it was a driver error, I probably wouldn't have come back. But knowing it was a mechanical, I knew I can come back and, and beat the mountain again. But uh, it's extremely dangerous. I mean, you're, there's no room for error. And there are certain places where it's okay to go off, but then there's certain places where you're not gonna come back. Weather and dangers are a constant which drivers must live with. But the talking point in Colorado after a week of practice and Volkswagen setting pole position is not only is Reese Millen's electric record in danger, but also former rally champion Sebastian Loeb's overall mountain record of 8 minutes 13 seconds. And just possibly even the magical 8 minute barrier itself. If they have to turn the speed down or the power output down to last the entire run, 
you may still see the record be broken, but maybe only by one or two seconds. The time that he turned to qualifying was 10 seconds faster than Loeb. The time that they turned on the top was four or five seconds faster. So everything says the eight minute barrier can be broken, which is incredible. But as technology grows in that space, uh, I'm a little not surprised at the same time. For the fans who can't get onto the mountain, there's Fan Fest on the streets of nearby Colorado Springs. The racers are true heroes, even drivers from the other side of the world. It is strange that it's a more popular race around the world. You know, Japan, New Zealand, Australia, Germany, you know, all through Europe, it's just, um, it seems like it's a bigger race than it is here. And I don't know whether it's just because there's so many distractions here with every sport in the world going on every day, but I've been over to Germany in a gas station and I put down my credit card for to pay gas and somebody recognized me. And I was just like, people don't even recognize me in my coffee shop in my hometown of 3,500 people. You know, that sort of fan support uh, it's just phenomenal and it just makes the event stronger and, and makes programs for next year even better. Whether you're racing a car you've made yourself in your garage at home or a multi, multi-million dollar bespoke machine of the future, every driver at Pikes Peak feels the same as race day dawns over Colorado. The lure of Volkswagen and the others has made this year's a sellout. Pikes Peak is officially full. Got a good night's sleep. The mountain when I woke up though was completely fogged in, as it does always here, it cleared instantly and now I'm watching the fog start to lift from the bottom. So it's gonna be a little intense moment here for the next hour waiting to go, but all in all, we're as prepared as we ever could be. This is the 25th year. It it's, doesn't make it uh, any easier. I'm never, I never get nervous before the race. I just get anxious that I want to go and get it over with. It's amazing. It's only a you know nine and a half minute run for us, and and uh, still a lot of things can go wrong. Running dozens of cars and motorbikes on the race to the clouds takes precision. It's like launching space rockets into the sky at one minute intervals. It is insane and it just keeps getting bigger. Um, we have about 350 volunteers, let alone all of our staff and all of the media and the uh, live stream crew and our timing and scoring. So it is, it has become a big production. I don't think we've had a stronger field since the late 90s. And so um, Volkswagen's been incredible to work with and um, it's just really exciting for the race. I'm from Kansas City. It's about a nine hour drive. This is my first time, he went last year. It's interesting, I like it, I'm excited for it. It's probably gonna beat the Peugeot 206 up to the peak. It'll probably take the time. I think the big V8s will always be around, but this kind of thing is very, very cool. It's I mean, exciting. with like the Teslas and everything else coming down in price and being more available for like blokes like us, we can just go out and buy something and just enjoy the electric power. It's really neat. It's to work. Yeah. <laughs> Today is the day. It's been a whole week of preparation. We had practice, we had qualifying, uh, press, media, the whole town has gotten involved. There's the most people that have ever been spectating. Every possible spectating pass has been sold out. Um, the media is up here for, I mean, you got a record attempt going on for both, I mean, for everything. It's going to be just absolutely epic. The motorcycles are on the hill, the fog is cleared, but the snow is supposed to come in later. So I'm just hoping we get up there before we got snow to deal with. Volkswagen are the stars of the show, but start from pole position behind the motorbikes. Anything can happen to make the start time a moving target. It adds to the tension. I'm feeling good, a little bit, uh, let's say, a positive nervousness, and of course looking to what the weather is doing. Until the car is at the start line, uh, we have to be professional, make sure that Romain has everything that he needs to get to the top, and then it will be nine minutes of emotion probably. Dumas is ready. Volkswagen are ready. But a motorcycle crash has halted proceedings. And now Mother Nature throws in her hand. Fog descends on the mountain and glum looks on the faces at Volkswagen. History and millions of dollars 
hang in the balance. Weather is an unpredictable element of racing up Pikes Peak, but one constant is the danger. When this mountain bites, it bites hard. It's Pikes Peak, so you're gonna get everything possible. This morning it was clear, then it was socked in again, then clear, now it's socked in again, so pretty standard. using all of that road. The crowd is standing on its feet. This is some of the most exciting, some of the most exciting racing you will see anywhere. record would go down. That's uh, amazing. I like your car. It's so cool. The team incredible, the atmosphere incredible, the challenge incredible. Uh, yeah, I have a lot of emotion. Yeah, it's, it's a kind of dream that I'm very happy that the race is done, I can tell you. Sven, can we just get a quick word? Was you talking to Roman? Yes. What did you say? Cool. First of all, thank you for being with us this uh, last nine months, because also Roman, with all the programs he has had, he's been flying to America back for 24 hours up and down. So uh, well, a massive congratulations. He did, he did what we asked him to do, uh, drive the car without any mistake. You look very emotional. How do you feel? But happy, relieved, tired. Um, but we're going to celebrate today and tonight. And then we look to the future. You've made motoring history today. Yeah, I know, but it will take some time to let it sink through. I think it's a, a fantastic time. I am very proud. No, we didn't know my time. And when we heard this time, it was fantastic. Did you believe? Did you think he could do this? I believe. For sure, for motorsport, today he proves that uh, an electric car, a fast electric car, can win a race with high level. And I think, you know, everybody on a weekend enjoy a lot looking Pikes Peak. I saw some tweets that uh, people saying it's more fun to look Pikes Peak than looking Formula One in Le Castellet. So I don't know if it's true, but, uh, <laughs> but for sure, it's, I think, for Volkswagen to prove the, that this car can beat everything here, it's a big step. After, for the road, it's another story.